Please stand. The entrance antiphon. Let my mouth be filled with your praise that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you, Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we continue to gather together in this Easter season, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Be present to your family, O Lord, we pray, and graciously ensure those you have endowed with the grace of faith an eternal share in the resurrection of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There broke out a severe persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and all were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made a loud lament over him. Saul, meanwhile, was trying to destroy the church, entering the house after house and dragging out men and women, he handed them over for imprisonment. Now those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Thus Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits crying out in a voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed and crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy.
everyone who believes in the Son has eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day, says the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. But I told you that although you have seen me, you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. When we look at scripture, we see a usually a continued chess match between God's moves and the enemy's counters, and back and forth it goes. For example, yesterday we saw the stoning of St. Stephen, and again, in response to, again, this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, you know, the enemy stirs up everybody against St. Stephen, and ultimately his life is taken. And we see more of that today as Saul goes from just consenting to Stephen's death now to becoming the lead persecutor in the, among the group. But God doesn't just stop there. He acts and uses the moment that it should be a tough moment of all these people scattering outside of Jerusalem for another purpose. Because as we see, Philip ends up in Samaria and starts preaching the gospel, and it takes hold. It takes root. So when we talk about God bringing good out of great suffering, Again, which is at the heart of the gospel in the person of Jesus Christ taking the greatest suffering and bringing about the greatest good, we see it illustrated throughout the history of the church. We can even look back, you know, all these years ago into some of the most difficult moments of the church. For example, the better part of 500 years ago, the church had a very tough moment when she started to break apart, when you had people start to break off and create different Christian sects. But what happened in all of those moments is that as Europe, which was the, really the center of all Christianity, began to go through its turmoil, God rose up saints who ultimately went out to the rest of the world sharing the gospel. And it ended up everywhere. It ended up in North America. It ended up into Asia. St. Francis Xavier being a primary example of bringing, again, the gospel not only to India, but bringing it over to Japan and even trying to get to China, even though he doesn't see it through before his passing. But the gospel continued to spread in spite of the turmoil in one area. Now, we look at our own modern day, and we see in Western civilization things not going well and our continued, I would say, battle intellectually with ourselves as we try to figure out just again who we are, and if we're going to retain our Christian identity. Yet in different parts of the world, where they're dealing with different things, even more what we call crazy persecutions, something else is occurring. The faith is beginning to grow at a rapid exponential rate. In the place where there's the greatest persecutions, the Middle East and Africa, there are more conversions to the Catholic faith than we can possibly imagine. So while Western civilization is on a downward trend and we're seeing Christianity go further and further down in terms of its hold on Western civilization, in terms of the places that are most persecuted, it's trending upwards. And the Catholic faith is almost holding a number because as the one side is falling this way, God is acting in another way to raise it up in other areas. We understand that we're part of this, again, this 
Catholic Church, this universal church that is meant to reach out to all people, to call people to Christ himself, because he's the Son of God. And he's the Son of God who made a sacrifice of atonement, not just for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. And he is constantly reaching out to hearts that are open and ready to receive him and taking everybody into himself. He's not dormant. He's always at work. Which leads us again back to our own situation here, where we see in Western civilization this decline. Are we ourselves ready to have those fertile hearts where God can plant the seeds, help them grow, and then allow us to be those instruments in his hands to again help raise it back up in our own area? Because God can do that. We always think we're too small. But look at some of the saints and like with the history of the church, we're pretty small too. And God still used them. We are not alone, dear friends. God is always at work within us, trying to bring about the fullness of his kingdom, where he can bring as many people into the fold as he possibly can with their consenting free will. Are we ready to be part of that equation, those instruments in his hands, as I continue to bring up, to help bring in those whom he's seeking? to seek out those who are lost in the midst of this world where everything is so confusing. He's made us for more. And with a simple yes and the power of the Holy Spirit within, he can do just that. So dear friends, as we walk up the aisle this morning to receive the gift that can only come from Christ, the gift of the Holy Eucharist, ask for the grace to understand what it is in our own hearts that remain as obstacles to the fullness of grace acting. Let them start to be laid down and let us again allow God to use us for the upbuilding of the kingdom in the midst of this world. Trusting in our Lord and Savior, we bring our prayers before him this day. That missionaries may find hearts open to the gospel message, we pray to the Lord. That the Christian faith of the newly baptized and confirmed may be a source of courage, we pray to the Lord. That the world's people may discover in one another cause for great joy, we pray to the Lord that the good news may bring healing to the sick and liberation to the oppressed, we pray to the Lord. Lord that we may listen eagerly to the news of our salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord As we pray for the sick, we lift up again in prayer again today, Sister Marina, a Venerini, Venerini missionary who's critically ill with COVID, and all those who are sick in our world during this pandemic, we pray to the Lord that the dead may feast forever on the bread that comes down from heaven, we pray to the Lord. And as we remember Louis Naples in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own heart. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we lift our prayers up before you, asking you to perfect in our hearts the gift of your graces, that we may continue to grow closer to you, and even in our smallness, littleness, and brokenness, be instruments of your hands, bringing the gospel to all we encounter. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we accept by you, Lord, in your sacraments as they this day of cleansing. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic host, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On your stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. The Lord has risen and shown his light upon us, upon he, uh, whom he has redeemed by his blood. Alleluia. We now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange, by which you have redeemed us, may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now pray together the prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Praise Have a great day, everyone.